accept greetings ladies and gentlemen and viewers of seven news television this is your program the experts many of those who have laptops desktops cell phones even tablets but they don't know how to manage or maintain it the reason why many people have spent much money buying these gadgets but within a period of six months the things get bad and they start asking questions what is going wrong they accuse the makers or the companies who are building up these gadgets you call them electronic gadgets or you call them ICT tools well the solution of this can only be gotten from a specialist or an expert with us this moment we have an expert a computer engineer who is right away from the southwest region of the country he's no other person than mr clarence jomo may i remind you viewers that we are talking today on the essence of computer maintenance and management good afternoon mr clarence good afternoon sir how are you today i'm very good and how was your trip from uh, the south region wonderful <clears throat> and thank you for having me how oh, it's a pleasure having you this day on our program we're talking about a computer management and maintenance first of all who is mr clarence Njom? uh mr clarence is an entrepreneur mm -hmm. from limbe yeah um i do double in a lot of other things mm. um i am also a consultant in uh, on academic affairs yeah. and uh i am also a farmer because my father that is what my father raised us on okay so yeah i i double in a lot of things but uh per se i would say i'm an entrepreneur from the southwest region we are talking today on uh computer maintenance of what importance is maintaining computer in our society um i think you cannot overstress the idea of maintaining either your computer being a desktop a laptop your tablet or your phone at the end of the day it is essentially like taking care of your own house okay. if you don't take care of your house it's gonna get dusty and it's gonna get dirty so hey if you don't take off your computer the same thing is going to happen and when that happens you know it's going to slow down its performance and eventually if you are unlucky your computer is going to break down so what is a computer uh there are many many definitions out there for what is a computer yeah but uh for you the viewers and for the layman i would say a computer is simply an electronic device that would convert raw data into meaningful information okay. through three main functions which are input process and output now when you say input um simply it's everything or all the information that you put into your computer right. so be it pressing the letter a or the letter z or one plus one okay all of that is input now it is the brain it is, it is a computer or some with this central processing unit that converts this input through what we call process okay, okay. into what you now see on your screen and this happens in a millisecond so is is a phone or tablets a computer as well yes it is just it is a, a computer of a different size no, right. pretty much what has happened is the operating system has been taken from you know your laptop you know and then been shrunken down to put into your phone yeah, so yeah. a computer is a laptop is a desktop is a phone all is a tablet all of them they are all computers so in that really you are telling me that phones and tablets are palm tops <laughs> <laughs> you can say that again yeah, yes, you can sure. say that. yes they all are <laughs> because yeah. you talk of a uh, desktop laptops and phones and lap tablets you can i believe you can call the palm you tops. can call them palm tops palm because tops, of course you hold them on your palm just like you say it's a desktop because it sits on the desk Index, yeah it's a laptop because you can put them on For your lap labs. and it's a palm top because you can hold them on your, on your palm so yes definitely <clears throat> it is they are all computers so what is computer management and maintenance okay now when you talk about now this is gonna go this might be a little technical for some people but i'm gonna try as much as yeah. possible to break it down now computer <laughs> maintenance okay this now goes into two this is this falls into two groups proactive and reactive maintenance 
Now, proactive maintenance, what am I talking about? It is everything that you do to make sure your computer doesn't slow down okay. or bad things don't happen to your computer. Yeah, yeah. When you are talking about reactive maintenance, now, of course, something bad has happened and now you are now reacting to it. Yeah. Then, if we look at now, what is computer management? For those of you who are actually IT experts, you will know that if you right click on uh, your desktop and you click on manage, there's going to be a window that pops up that says uh, computer management. Yeah. Now, this is not what I'm talking about. I, I'm talking more about computer organization. Okay? Now, for example, if I, I look at your computer from your desktop, I'm going to immediately know what sort of a person you are. Because I think uh, uh, my brother, who is also an IT engineer, Brian Mpafe, once said, hey, the way you treat your computer is the same way you treat your house. Yeah. So if I get on your desktop and I see files everywhere, okay, all cluttered, I'm good. I take home the idea that hey, this is how this person is. Yeah. Now, if you go, you know your computer, you know there is a folder for music, there is a folder for pictures, there is a folder for documents. Yeah. You can always store your different files in these different folders, or you can create your own folders on your computer. Now, for those of you who say, okay, but how do you do that? It's a very simple process. You right-click on your desktop. A side menu comes up, pops up. You go down to new. Another side menu pops up, and you click on folder. Right. And you simply type the name that you want to give to that folder, and you click enter. And that is simply how you create a folder. Now, maybe you want to put now maybe um, a particular genre of music or maybe pictures from your vacation, you cannot yeah. get those and not dump them into this new folder of yours. So, computer management and computer maintenance, they're sort of, they're kind of different, but I think uh, to a certain extent, they still go hand in hand. You talk of kind of different. So, can you tell us the difference between maintenance and management? Okay, management. How do I manage my PC? How does my PC, what do I want? So, for example, I'm going to put my um, pictures in my pictures folder. Okay. I'm going to make sure that my antivirus is updated. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that maybe every month I'm going to blow dust my computer to make sure that all the debris from inside, you know, yeah. are dusted out. That is that is you managing your computer. Your computer. Okay. okay, keeping it up to date, Make it, making it running efficiently and effectively. Now, but when you're talking about maintenance, okay, we are now looking more of fixing. That's where I was talking about there are two types of fixes, pro and re, okay, proactive and reactive. reactive. Yeah, so when you're talking about maintenance now, we're talking about fixing your computer. So that is what I'm going to tell you is the difference between management and maintenance on your PC. Can anybody maintain a computer? Of course. It is very, very, very simple. It's a very simple aspect. Unfortunately, a lot of people, because they lack the know-how, can't maintain their computer. For example, I had a friend uh, a couple of years back who is a maintenance uh, technician, was called to an office that the computer was not run, that the desktop was not running very well. He went there, um, looked around, and after 15 seconds, uh, realized that, hey, the power plug was not plugged in. Yeah. Um, he told the directress to go out. That is going to take a while. And she left. And uh, in t and then he sat there, played his music for a few minutes, for about 10 minutes, and then plugged in the power cord. Called the lady and said he was done, and he was paid 15,000 francs. <laughs> yeah, just because the lady never knew that the power cord was not plugged in. Okay. So, you see, you can do it. For example, if you are home and you realize that, hey, your computer is having an issue, don't run to a technician immediately. You can troubleshoot it yourself. For example, look, make sure your computer is always connected to power. Yeah. If you are using a laptop, make sure that the voltage on your charger matches the voltage on your on your laptop okay. because sometimes the variance of that voltage, might, I mean, you might see the charger on, but it's not working. That's true. Yeah. Now, or for example, or you can also, I mean, your keyboard might not be working, don't take it to a technician, you know, restart the computer first. Mm? Okay. So, those are simple. Like, if you run your computer for six hours or eight hours, it is a good idea to restart it. Because, just like your brain, after six hours of studying, you get tired. 
you want to rest you get up you go out for an hour and then you come back in so after an after a few hours about six hours of using your laptop or desktop restart it and then continue working because after a while guess what it might slow down and you might think that you're having a problem but actually you're not we are talking about maintenance um, uh, it has been proven that most people having laptops are having problems with their battery. What can really be the cause of battery failure? Uh, <laughs> you have a cell phone, right? I have it. Okay. Um, um, I think uh, you would bear. You would. You would actually accept that after a few years, your the if your bad if your phone your cell phone keeps charged for maybe two hours, or six hours, or a day. <clears throat> after a year, you realize that that span is drastically decreased this crazy yeah. yes so it's the same thing with your laptops but now for those of you like the one thing i'm going to tell you is if your laptop is fully charged unplug it from your power source all right that is the most important thing that will make your battery actually last longer always unplug it when it is fully yeah. charged because if it is still plugged in guess what you are it is like you are giving electricity to electricity yeah. there's double power Mm -hmm. so your battery is actually gonna get bad faster so once it's fully charged unplug it when it gets down to about 10 5 percent plug it back in okay thank you very much mr clarence njomo let us follow this report viewers of seven years breeze goza attended a seminar talking about the digital economy let's get what he has for us this moment breeze goza Avec des milliards de données échangées par seconde dans le monde, le numérique constitue en un point de thé le moteur central de l'évolution humaine. Une transformation digitale mondiale à laquelle ne peut se soustraire le continent africain qui, au cours des journées TIC et numérique, a permis aux experts de la zone de faire le déplacement de la capitale camerounaise pour redéfinir davantage l'Africain du XXIe siècle au travers des dynamiques opérées par celui-ci dans le digital. Je vais partager avec vous certains, euh, certains développements qui, projettent, qui vont nous projeter vers euh, l'année 2025. Et c'est ce que nous faisons déjà aujourd'hui pour préparer l'avenir. Un enjeu crucial à l'ère de l'industrie 4.0 des objets connectés, l'Afrique en général et le Cameroun en particulier, se doivent d'accélérer l'entrepreneuriat et l'innovation numérique pour arrimer le développement du continent à l'inamovible procédé d'intelligence artificielle. On essaie de transposer l'intelligence humaine euh, vers euh, les ordinateurs qui sont capables de travailler encore ces idées, enfin ces procédés un peu plus rapidement que l'être humain. Un défi qui passe par une mutation profonde des structures et surtout de la superstructure des Africains. Thanks, Brice Gozok, for that report about the digital economy. The world, as we all know, it is moving towards the digital. And if you don't move on the rail of digitalization, you'll be left behind. Viewers of Seven News Television, if you're just switching on your television set, this is your program, The Experts. Today, we are talking on the essence of computer maintenance and management. With us is an expert right away from the Southwest region, FACO Division, precisely Limbe, Mr. Parfait Clarence Jomo. He said something very pertinent and important that I grabbed. If your laptop is fully charged, please do the favor to pluck it off. That will help you maintain the battery or the power of your computer or laptop. Yeah, Mr. Clarence Njomo Pafe, you're coming from the Southwest region, a very troubled zone, as you know. <laughs> oh, yes. You talked about the battery. Some people have bought their computers or their laptops within a short period of two months that start experiencing battery failure. What can really be the cause? Mm, I don't know. Well, did they buy a new computer yeah. or did they buy a second-handed second computer 
because if you have you're buying a second handed computer then that is not a problem that you should be unaware of yeah with a second handed computer the battery might last for 10 minutes and i don't think you're gonna be you're gonna be the, i mean i don't think I'm, you're gonna go, cry, go crying to anybody yeah okay but if you're buying a new laptop and its battery lasts for only two hours then i think you should go back to where you bought your laptop and see the seller i've i've heard people talking about fundamentals of computers what is it all about um fundamentals of computer is simply the basic knowledge of computers okay okay now yeah. f what do i what do you need to know about the computer Mm. How does the computer function? function? How do you, I mean, how do you, like I was talking about earlier, how do you, where do you keep the different files that you have on your computer? What kind of programs, you know, do you run? Like, for example, you say, oh, what's a program, by the way? A lot of people, don't, I mean, <coughs> we just know program, programs. Yeah. But what's a program? A program is simply a sequence of instructions that, when executed, you know, gives you a particular outcome. Ah, you're driving me off. Yeah, so. That is driving me off the way. Yeah, no, I'm coming back to you. So, <laughs> that is what a program is. I mean, I'm just talking to our viewers now. So, that's what a program is. But I'm saying that. The essence of computer fundamentals is for me yeah. and you and the lay person to know how a computer functions and the different parts of that computer. So, what happened to a computer if it's not properly managed? There are, um, there are several uh, things that might happen to a computer if they are not managed. For example, um, we have what we call malware. Okay? okay, it's the short name, the, the full meaning is malicious software. And uh, these are, uh, for example, viruses, Trojan horses, root kits, time bombs, logic bombs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are all malicious softwares, okay. you know, that when executed will actually impede the efficient functioning of your computer. And all this happens because of poor maintenance of that computer. So, for example, if you're if you realize that your antivirus is expiring, ladies and gentlemen, please get a new antivirus. It is easier to get a new antivirus than to buy a new computer. Yeah. Yes. So, if you can't afford it, get a free antivirus. You have Ava, you have Avas free antivirus. You have um, Smadav. So, I mean, you have quite a few of them out there that are free. You can actually download. You can download them and you know run them on your pc they are not the most effective though but they are actually going to save you from common malicious softwares i've heard you talk about series of bombs <laughs> let me find out mm -hmm. do these bombs yes. kill the computer or kill the humans <laughs> <laughs> well when i talk about uh time bombs and logic bombs um they are simply malicious softwares that uh, somebody can actually put on your computer that will, uh, that will affect it adversely. So, for, for example, when I talk about uh, a logic bomb, a logic bomb is simply a malicious <coughs> software that can only be activated when certain conditions are met. Yes. So, for example, I can say, if, some, if I have a computer and I put a password, I can say, hey, if somebody puts in the, my password wrong three times, erase the whole hard drive. Is that not risky? Well, depending on how sensitive the materials I have on my computer are, okay. it might not be. Okay. Yeah. And now, for a time bomb, on the other hand, a time bomb is where you put a malicious software that is that would execute itself on a particular date in the future. Okay. Which means that if you fire me from your TV station today, I can put a malicious software on your computer, and after three weeks, it goes off and everything shuts down in this building. Oh. That is a time bomb. That sounds very interesting. And scary too. So people like you ought to be careful with guys like you. Uh, no, I'm a very nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, yes, that sounds very interesting. And, uh, mm. Let me find out Mr. Clarence Jomo. Mm. And how do we manage a computer? Mm. Okay, well, let's talk about um, how do you help yourself when, you, when we're talking about malicious softwares, okay? Yeah. Um, I mean, I didn't even talk about spywares and adwares. Those are also different types of malicious okay, softwares. Okay, well, you're going to talk about those, those <laughs> softwares. Uh, yes, I, I can briefly touch on them because they all are malicious softwares. I know that the uh, what we know in Cameroon pretty much is viruses. Viruses. Yes, we hear virus. But <laughs> viruses are just one component 
mm. of malicious softwares. Okay. They are, like I have listed earlier, there are many others that can actually do more harm on your computer than a virus. Yeah. yeah. Most of them, like uh, your virus, they will replicate themselves, which means that once they affect your computer, they replicate themselves and slow down the performance of, of your computer. computer yeah. yeah. Okay. For a Trojan horse, it, 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 I mean, I think you know the uh, story of the, Troy. Yeah, the Troy. There you go. It's the same thing. It manifests itself like a, re like a program or hides behind a program. Then once you click that program, the software gets, de that malicious software gets deployed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, when you talk about, uh, then you have backdoors. Backdoors. Backdoors are, somebody might send you an attachment, and once you open that attachment, a backdoor gets opened, whereby this person can now access, has free access to your computer and all of your information without you ever knowing it. Don't tell me that. Yes, that happens. So these are all ways people can get access to you. Now, what do you do? Like I, I earlier said, get an antivirus, an updated one, and make sure it never expires. Oh, yeah, okay. Yes, because once your antivirus expires, you're going to start having problems. And a malicious software is also a program. So as people go about creating anti uh, malicious softwares, we're also creating, um, I'm sorry, <laughs> as we create malicious softwares, people are also there who are creating antiviruses. antiviruses. Yes. Yeah. So it is a game that they play, you know. Oh, we are creating this antivirus. Of course, the next day somebody sitting on their computer trying to build uh, a malicious software that's going to beat or crack that the, the particular an antivirus. antivirus. So you have to constantly update and upgrade them so that you are well protected. You talk about spy, what spy virus? Spyware and spy adware. Spyware are high words. <laughs> what is a spyware? Uh, a spyware is simply a malicious program that somebody might use or execute or send your computer to <clears throat> spy on what you're doing. What are you doing? Yeah, so pretty much I can be, I can, I can actually execute a spyware on your machine and everything that you're doing I'm seeing. Wow. Yes. Without you being beside you. Without me machine. ever being beside you, without you ever knowing it. And how is that possible? Well, it's possible. <laughs> I just want to know. I want our yeah, to know how somebody, is it. Somebody has to execute that program on your computer. So, basically, I can actually send to you an email okay. with an attachment of yeah. a picture. Yeah, okay. And you open that picture and you're, oh, what a nice picture. Oh, what a good friend. But once you open the picture, that malicious software gets deployed. So you have access now to my computer yes. or my laptop. Hundred percent. And every information inside my thing, my laptop, yes. you, you grab it. Yes. If you remember, I mean, if you know, we have this problem today of um, um, identity theft, online identity oh, theft. Yeah, online. This is what <coughs> happened. This is what people are doing. Oh. Yeah. This is what people are doing. They steal their identity. Hadn't they steal their identity using spywares oh. and backdoors? Yeah, Mr. Clarence. Jomo. Yes, sir. <coughs> Um, it happens that some people have their laptops and uh, when they have a little bit of problem, they click on something and they say, repair your computer. What happens? W w I don't understand. When they click on something? Yeah. The computer is like uh, shutting off all the time. When it mm -hmm. comes on, they ask ah, you, should we repair or not? Okay. So how do you manage that type of situation? Um, I think in that scenario, either your operating system is cr has crashed or is crashing. <clears throat> And you are being asked to repair. Now, the advice I'm going to give you here is, if you don't have, uh, if you are not created a, an operating system image already, you might have to reformat that computer. Uh -huh. What do I mean by creating <clears throat> a, an image? Usually, the first law of computer is back up all your documents all the time. Mm. Always, never you say, oh, I'm going to do it next week because you never know. I mean, just like a car, a computer is unpredictable. Today it might work. Tomorrow it might not work. So, please, <clears throat> back up your data all the time. It is going to save you a lot of headache. So, if, like what you're saying, if it says repair and you realize that you can't repair it, Guess what? You have to format it. Okay. Yeah. So when you are seeing that those information, then probably your your machine has been attacked by a virus and it is crashing or it's crashed. When you talk of backup, mm -hmm. many people don't understand that uh, term. That's, oh, okay. I'll explain that. When we talk about backing up your computer, it is normally your computer has two drives: a drive C and a drive D. 
Okay. If your computer does not have a drive C and a drive D, this is what you are going to do. Click on start the start menu. Right click on computer. Click on manage. A menu is going to a window is going to come up. At the bottom of that window you're going to see disk management. Oh, right. Go and click on disk management and you're going to see how many partitions your computer has. Okay. If it has only <coughs> one, right click on the partition you have and you say partition. Okay, I see. It's good. Another window is going to come up. It's going to ask you how many gigabytes of space you want to allocate to this new drive. You can say from 10 to 20 to 30 to 40 gig, depending on how big okay. your uh, hard drive space, is. Yeah. yeah. And once you do that, you are going to have two different partitions. Now, in this second partition, this is where you are going to back up all your data backing up simply means taking everything that you have on drive c your music your <coughs> pictures your documents and putting it in drive d because once your computer crashes only drive c crashes okay drive d is going to be fine so when they are formatting it they're going to format c, c not d not d all right and what guess what all of the data okay. is still going to be available for you oh thanks very much for this wonderful information you're giving our viewers uh Viewers of Seven News Television, Christian Esimi talked about the Kribi Deep Sea Ports. What is it all about? The grow. Christian C'est quasiment le seul projet autour duquel Paul Biya peut se vanter à cette étape d'avoir produit un peu de contenu depuis le lancement de ces grands chantiers il y a plus de 5 années. Le port en eau profonde de Kribi, dont les infrastructures se graissent d'ores déjà fièrement sous le ciel de Mboro. Désormais, l'homme ne fait plus aucune forme d'économie de la parole autour de cette infrastructure portuaire. Un peu comme si le chef de l'État tenait déjà entre ses mains son premier vrai trophée de guerre. Nous allons également poursuivre résolument l'exécution de nos grands travaux avec un accent particulier sur les infrastructures routières. Les services de proximité à la population, s'agissant notamment de la fourniture en eau, en électricité et en soins de santé, bénéficieront d'une attention spéciale. Il faut bien dire que Paul Biya n'a pas de choix en réalité. Face à l'insuccès notoire que ses autres grands projets ont généré jusqu'ici, Kribi, qui n'attend que la mise en exploitation officielle de son port, est donc le nouveau territoire autour duquel le chef de l'État trouve apaisement en tentant d'oublier les échecs d'hier. Dans sa bouche, désormais, plus rien ne filtre au sujet de l'Ompangar, Montveleux ou encore des autoroutes, un peu comme s'il tenait à ne plus y penser, consacré comme il semblait être en ce moment à savourer sa grande victoire que beaucoup cependant relativisent avec bien trop d'emphase. Vous avez vu un projet structurant qui a un résultat. La Cameco, c'est un projet structurant. Les centrales thermiques, c'est un projet structurant. Les barrages, est-ce que vous avez un barrage qui donne déjà un rendement La centrale à gaz de Kribi, il n'y a même pas de gaz. N'est-ce pas Donc tous ces projets structurants pour lesquels ils ont lancé des emprunts, n'est-ce pas Aucun d'eux n'a un rendement aujourd'hui. Sorte de totem économique donc, autour duquel Paul Biya trouve un peu de répit en brandissant devant la majorité son efficacité apparente. Yeah, Christian Esimi, thanks very much. We know that Cameroon is moving towards what we call the structural adjustments. How good it is, I can't tell. But all we know is that one day things is going to be better viewers of several years television if you are just tuning in this is your program they expect today we are talking on the essence of computer management and maintenance you heard him mr Carlos jomo Pafe, who came right away from faco division southwest region he was talking about how you can manage your computer if ever you see the message repair, just try to find out the number of ticks your computer have. If you have to, 
transfer your documents to drive D and let what is going to happen with C happen because your documents are safe. That is what I learned is known as backup. Surely I will do that with my own computer. Mr. Clarence. So we are talking about computer management, which is more expensive, managing the hardware or the software? <laughs> <laughs> Um, first off, I, you, your viewers, you have to understand that um, it's kind of relative, but hardware is a one-time expense. Okay. Software is an ongoing expense. And this is what I mean. Once you buy a laptop or a desktop or an iPad or a tablet or a phone, you've bought it. Mm -hmm. You have it with you. So as long as you don't maybe throw it on the ground, the carcass is always going to be fine. But when you're talking about but the softwares, your operating system, your, prog your application programs like Word or um, your Zuma, your PDF for files, I mean, all of those other software programs are a continuous expenditure. You are always going to need softwares in order to upgrade your PC. Yeah. For example, if your, vi your, your antivirus is actually expiring, you need to actually upgrade it or buy a new one or pay for a new one. If, for example, um, your Fox Reader all of a sudden is not working anymore, you probably need to get a new one. Or from time to time, you'll see an upgrade uh, message come up to say, hey, well, you need to upgrade this particular program. So, I would say softwares are more expensive than the hardware. The hardware, yeah, it's a one-time thing. It might be 320,000 francs for a new um, good laptop. Yes, you spent it. But when you start looking at now, hey, your operating system, if you have it for 10 years, guess what? You might format that machine twice or thrice. If you format that machine, it means, hey, you need to put in programs. By putting those programs, how much is it going to cost you? Yeah. Let me say you do it five times. Mm -hmm. Okay, most people are going to charge you 10,000 francs, 20,000, 25,000 francs just to format your laptop. They're going to charge you on every program they're putting on it. Now, if they're going to put an antivirus, if you go down to maybe um, uh, junior computers in Limbe to buy, you know, an antivirus is going to cost you probably 35, 45,000 francs. Wow. Yes. So, you see, those expenditures do add up. So, at the end of the day, I would say softwares are much more of a problem when it comes to expenditure than your hardware. So, explaining to somebody who doesn't know the difference between the software and the hardware, what is a hardware? Um, layman terms, hardware is everything that you're going to touch on your computer. So, the screen, yeah. the mouse, the keyboard, okay? okay, the RAMs, the hard disks, the fans, those are all hardwares. All right. Now, the softwares are the programs that are run on your machine, things that you cannot touch. For example, your operating system. Every machine has an operating system, be it uh, Windows 7, Windows 10, Ubuntu. Eh? Those are all uh, XP. Yeah. Those are all different uh, operating systems that you have. So, hey, you are going to always have to upgrade them yeah. or buy them. I see. Yes. I see. So, those are the ones that you cannot touch. Those are your softwares. And how can one become an, a computer expert? Um, there are many, many different routes that somebody uh, that somebody can go. Because first of all, computer. And when we talk about information technology or computer, it's a very, very broad field. Um, you have computer maintenance engineers. You have software engineers. You have programmers. You have networkers. You. Have, I mean, there are so, so, so many different fields. Now, if you have a passion for IT, look for what actually pleases you the most or what gives you joy doing yeah. and go for it. There are many schools out there that would help train you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think even the University the University of Boya, the University of uh, uh, the Catholic University, all of them, I think maybe Douala, they all have uh, IT sections today. So you can actually go for a three-year program for a degree and if you want to if you want to go further, you can now go for your master's and your PhD. But then there is another route that you can go to. So somebody will say, okay, you know what, I, I don't want to spend five years going or ten years going to school to become a doctor or to become an expert. You can always go, let me say, for example, you want to become a networker. You do CCNA, CCNP, and then CCNI. And we are already at the top of the bar. 
okay from there you can become a systems engineer or if you're a maintenance guy you can do a plus or you do n plus mm -hmm. so these are all different uh, routes that somebody can take to become an expert you, I heard you talking of CCNP, CCNA, <laughs> CCNI, A, B, N, B. So, what is uh, the difference between all this? Um, CCNA, Cisco Certified Network um, Administrator, is the first uh, level okay. for people want to do networking. Yeah. And then uh, you have System uh, Cisco Certified Network um, Professional, and then Cisco Certified. Uh, uh, I, I think I can't even remember what I is. I can't remember, but I'll look for it and then I'll get back to you. But those, that, that is the highest level for networkers. For networkers? Yes. And can anybody just dive into the maintenance field and to become an expert? Yes. It is a room for everybody. If you don't have an O level, you can get into it if you are smart enough. Okay. If you, don't have, if you have just your uh, advanced level. I mean, and these are, I believe these are the best routes for us today in Cameroon actually because these are fields where you can actually dive into and get a job as easily and fastest as possible mm. yes or on the other hand you can actually create your own job for example if somebody goes out and says okay you know what I want to become a, I want to do a database management yeah, mm? yeah I can become a database you can do um, um, Oracle and from Oracle I can actually create my own shop and become a consultant all right yes now when i talk about databases a database is simply a reservoir for storing information yeah yeah like your excel in uh, your office suit yeah that is also uh, your database so you can actually get in it three um three months six months a year you're already you're already an expert and you can actually open your own shop you are talking of an oracle and we know the, what oracle is all about what is that oracle when it comes to computer oh comp when, uh, when we're talking about oracle in computer we're talk simply talking about a software okay okay a software that was built that is being used to store information i mean it's oracle today is a very very big company in the u.s but uh, simply breaking down it is just for storing it's a software for storing information okay do they pray for magical powers in their oracle <laughs> <laughs> um well i if you say magical powers i'll or say mystical they, powers not mystical okay. but they do store they can i mean they can store gazillions of terabytes of information on them so that is pretty much uh, a hefty feat so it's kind of a miracle Oh, thanks very much, Mr. Pafe Clarence and Jomo from Limbe. Let's follow this report. Viewers of Seven News Television and Intent, La Vazil, Isanga, made this report concerning the digitals. What is a digital all about? Let's get La Vazil. La présence d'une partie du gratton de chef de département ministériel dans l'une des salles de l'hôtel phare du boulevard du Vermeer à Yaoundé marque bien l'importance que revêt cette rencontre internationale consacrée au savoir-faire digital africain, thème choisi, lors de cette cinquième édition des journées TIC et numérique qu'a tenu à saluer le ministre des Postes et Télécommunications, Minette Libomlikeng, venu lancer cette palabre continentale. Cette initiative rentre dans la transformation numérique de notre pays et vous savez que le chef de l'État a insisté il a invité tout le monde, administration publique, secteur privé, à tout faire pour attraper le gap. Un horizon digital, possible à travers une adaptation rapide et disciplinée des internautes des 54 États africains. Durant cette édition, nous allons euh, démontrer de façon concrète et pratique toutes les applications intelligentes qui sont adaptées à la santé, à la finance, à l'éducation, à la logistique, à la sécurité routière, au transport. Un paradigme nouveau qui passe par une culture de l'innovation dans le vaste écosystème numérique. Le numérique irrigue tous les domaines d'activité. Tous les domaines d'activité et il ne se passe pas une activité qui ne soit pas irriguée par, par le numérique. Et euh, parlant maintenant de l'innovation, c'est l'innovation qui crée la valeur. C'est l'innovation qui crée les richesses, c'est elle qui crée les emplois. Et par ricochet, c'est elle qui fait le développement. Un chantier futuriste et urgent à l'heure où le monde s'emploie déjà à l'industrie 4.0 des objets connectés.
Thanks very much for that report, La Voisin. Viewers of 7 News Television, if you're just tuning in or switching on your television set, this is your program, The Expert. We all know that everything that has a beginning will definitely have an end. But I'm not saying that I'm closing the program for now. We are talking about a digital age. Everything is becoming very digital. People sell goods through the internet. They buy things through the internet. Very soon, I'll command my plate of Ufuairo through the internet and it will get to me. Don't ask me how. We are talking about the essence of computer maintenance and management. Mr. Jomo, Perfect Clarence, you just followed that report. Is it necessary for our continent, Cameroon in particular, to move towards the digital economy? Yes, I think it is uh, essential in the growth of the economy. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's essential in our own individual and personal growth. Yeah. I think uh, also when you talk, when you look at the business milieu, mm -hmm. I think uh, going digital is uh, the next big thing. Yeah. Now um, there are a lot of um, scams out there, so people should be very careful. Mm. But um, you should be aware that. What, like you're talking about ordering your plate of phone arrow online mm -hmm. or from on the internet. I think it's already being done mm -hmm. in the Western world. You can actually sit in your home and order your food and it's going to get delivered to you. Yeah. So I don't think why we should be an exception to that. Mm -hmm. I do believe that it's just only a matter of time before we get to that step too. So uh, the digital world is our, own, our playground. And uh, we pretty much invite everybody, you know, all Cameroonians to join us in it. So you put talking, I uh, heard that in Boya, there's what's known as a silicon. Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley. Yes. Yeah. Um, we borrowed, the, the, the name was borrowed from uh, Silicon Valley in California. Yeah. Um, I think uh, when we talk about Boya, I think Boya is... Um, the educational hub in the southwest region and it's gone it's gone a long way you know when it comes to the digital age there are a lot of children there of young Cameroonians who are doing a lot of great things um mm. i i think i was talking to somebody the other day who was saying hey you know what my i mean if you need to pay for anything online come and meet me you know and i'm like but why should i come and meet you, you say well because a lot of people don't know what what to do or where to go to or blah blah and i'm like well it's you if you have a credit card you go online you know, look, you know what's, you know the safe sites to go to, yeah. And you simply, you know, put in type in your information, and guess what? You are going to get uh, what pro whatever product you're buying. I, for example, I think seventy percent of all my transactions are done on online. I pay for just about everything online. Mm. So I think if I can do it, I think everybody else out there can do it. You were warning our viewers about the scammers. You're talking about internet fraud now. Yes. So how can we prevent this? Um, it is a very difficult fit, but I think uh, if you are smart enough, you are going to be able to avoid it. If something is too good to be true, ladies and gentlemen, then it is too good to be true. Yeah. Yes, that is the first thing you have to know. Don't second guess yourself, because I know for the most part, you are going to look at it and you go, but man, why is this thing so cheap? Once you, that hits your brain, please, don't even look at that side again. Move on to something else. Yeah, so avoid things that you see to be too, too good to be true. And <clears throat> when you are actually putting, uh, buying something online, make sure it's from a, a credit, an accredited supplier. All right. Yes, because um, for you, you can actually check the Better Business Bureau, BBB.com, and you would see complaints about uh, websites that are selling fake items or that are not uh, credible. So oh, you can always go there and that will help you look and uh, fish out or fish out scammers who are out there. We're talking of how or ways to become an engineer in computer. How many years you as an expert do you advise a young man who just left uh, school and is having advanced level to go in to become an engineer in computer? Depending on what path you are trying to take, <clears throat> I will say this. If you think the, univer the university is your pathway, then uh, you can spend at least five to six years yeah. getting to your master's, at least a master's degree. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
if you think you are not that financially sound but you still want to follow this field then i would give you probably two years mm. you know to go through maybe ccna ccmp and ccni or to go through a plus and n plus so yeah depending on the where because i always look at finances first i'm not gonna say you have to spend six years and maybe two million francs in order to get there no yeah. that's not always the case you can still spend seven hundred thousand francs in two years to get there how seven hundred thousand francs that is money to buy a plot though do you know that i do okay um we are getting closer to the end of the program mr clarence parfum jomo so what computer troubleshooting methods can you help our viewers with um now computer troubleshooting is an easy thing that everybody can do at home now let's say you come home and you put on your computer it doesn't come on don't start crying immediately mm -hmm. check first of all do we have electricity of course you know our problem here in yeah. cameroon do we have electricity if there's no electricity then hey cool it off cool off the jets if there's electricity make sure your power cord is plugged into a power supply and make sure it's connected to your PC. Yeah. If that is done and your computer still doesn't come on, then check the cord itself. Maybe get a different cord because the cord might be bad. It's not necessarily a computer. Okay. If the cord is good, then you might have a problem of, hey, maybe your RAM is bad. So normally maybe you put it on and then you get a three beep sound. Beep, beep, beep. That might be telling you that, hey, your RAM has a problem. All right. Yeah, take it to a technician. If you have a, if it comes up and you have a black screen, know that probably your operating system is crashed. Huh. Yeah, you need to format it. So those are some simple things that you need to know. Now we have some desktops today that will not even come, that will not actually come on if the mouse and the keyboard are not plugged in. So That's true. make sure that they are plugged in, and then you put it on. You just mentioned uh, keyboard. And we've noticed that many laptops nowadays, people are moving with laptops, but they have uh, external keyboards. So, <laughs> <laughs> that sounds funny, but it is real. People yes. move with laptops, but they have external keyboards. <laughs> Just because the uh, keyboards are not working, <laughs> what really okay. is the cause of the defect of the keyboards? Um, one. The simplest and the most uh, rampant problem is accumulation of dust under the keypads. Okay. Yeah. So that's why we saw in the beginning when I was talking about maintenance, I said make sure you blow, blow your computer. Yeah. Now, when dust accumulates <coughs> under your keypad, guess what? When you press those keys, they're not going to work. Mm -hmm. And most people are going to think, oh my goodness, my keyboard is bad. But you simply need to go out, give maybe one of those Ikea Natea guys a hundred francs, and they blow your keyboard and it's fine. Wow. Yeah. That's <coughs> the end of the story. Okay. But if that is not the problem then maybe the sensors under your keypads are dead and if that is the case you might need to get a new keyboard now they are not as expensive as people think yeah yeah it is just the mentality of it you know and sometimes you are just lazy somebody would say oh you know what i'd rather go get an external keyboard for maybe 2,500 francs than buy a new keyboard for 5,000 francs. I would think it doesn't make sense because yeah. carrying that keyboard along with you, that's extra luggage. For what? Add 2,5 to it, have 5,000 francs, buy, an, buy a new keyboard, and you're going to be good. It's surprising that you're telling me, uh, telling our viewers that uh, the keyboard is just 5,000 francs. Meanwhile, there are places that if you go and ask the keyboard, they'll tell you between 5,000 to 30,000 francs. Yes, you have uh, every computer is not the, every laptop is not the same, and I'm sure we're talking about laptops, laptops right? Yeah. Every laptop <clears throat> is not the same, and it is easier for you to go to a to a, a computer maintenance technician who has scrapped a lot of computers, okay. and you will get that for five thousand francs. All right. Going to a shop to get a new one is going to cost you twenty five thirty thousand francs. Wow. So my advice is, if you have a computer maintenance guy that you know go see him if your keyboard has a problem and if only he doesn't have it then can you go to a shop for a new one because that expenditure the difference between five thousand and twenty five thousand francs is a huge twenty thousand francs that can do something for you that's true yeah 
Oh, thanks very much, Mr. Clarence Njombo Pafwe, for accepting our invitation this day. Thank you. It was my pleasure, and thanks for having me. Okay. Viewers of Seven News Television, we have come to the end of this program, The Experts. We are drawing the curtain close. But let me remind you that for this program to be a success, we have the technicians, the cameramen, the editors, and the guy operating the buttons that you don't see. Seven News is not closing, but the program, The Expert, is closing for the day. We love you all, and God bless you. Keep on watching Seven News. <laughs>